Good afternoon, everyone. The first order of business this evening is the organizational meeting for the 2016 Caroline County Planning Commission. For the record, with us this evening is Dr. Carol Horton with Port Royal District, Mr. Charles Shoebridge for the Madison District, Mr. Bob Humera for the Western Caroline District, Mr. Les Stanley for the Bowling Green District. The first order of business is the election of a chairman for this year's planning commission. The floor is open for nomination. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to nominate Mr. Les Stanley for chairman. Mr. Stanley has been nominated. Mr. Shoebridge has second Mr. Humer's nomination. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. I'll turn the meeting over to Mr. Stanley. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, <coughs> election of me, and uh, I will certainly do my best to uh, continue the very fine record that we have here in Caroline with our planning commission. Thank you all very much. Our next order of business is election of vice chair. Uh, do I have any nominations for that? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Bob for Murrow for that, please. Do I have a second? I'll be happy. I'll second. Okay. <coughs> Ms. Zek deserted us, and that's okay. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you very much. Okay. Next, we have our, our adoptions of rules of order. <laughs> and I know that uh, you guys may have a few questions, so. Uh, Mr. Gamera, would you like to? Yes, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, item 4, which reads, all new members appointed to the Planning Commission shall or should attend the CPEAV Planning Commission certified program within one year of appointment. Costs associated with attendance will be reimbursed by the county upon, upon completion. I'd like to have that changed like to change the word to to the shall to must and I'd also like to add this sentence also all commissioners should attend seminars and annual refresher courses with all the various, uh, I guess you would say, things that come before the Planning Commission. I think that's a very, very good idea. So, do we need to make a motion? Yes, we need someone to make a motion to, um, if you're just going to accept all of the changes uh, in the rules of order, you can just make one motion to well, accept I them with that change that Mr. Humera noted. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any? Because I do have one uh, under... Uh, Roman numeral six applications. It says that uh, any the application deadline for filing items would be the first day of the month. Sometimes the first day of the month would fall on a Saturday or a Sunday, and I feel like we just need to say if it falls uh, on a weekend, they, uh, they would be due by the following Monday. That's my suggestion. The following business day, just in case following it's a holiday or something like that. Following business day. Or you could say the preceding business day if you wanted it the Friday or the preceding. I personally prefer it to be the next business day. Right, right. We, we would have, staff would agree with that. Are there any other additions or anyone else would like to make? Okay, could we get a motion for those? Two? We'll do those two together if that's okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I uh, like to make a motion that um, the clerk bomb mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Les Stanley and Bob Vermeera uh, be elected to the offices as uh, spoken. Uh, this is the uh, is just talking about the rules of order that commissioners uh, must attend. Um, 
the CPA Planning Commission certification, new members, and then I made that change about applications coming in. So it was, uh, we just need a motion saying that we be we would approve that. Roman numeral one and number four, yes, oh, on page one. Uh, I'm proposing that where we were changing the word of shall to should, change that to must. Also, all commissioners should attend seminars and annual refresher courses. We, we have often attended uh, things put on uh, by the uh, <clears throat> uh, Spotsylvania uh, Regional uh, Library. We'll have things up there. We've, we've been to some there. Uh, we've also been <clears throat> to the CPAB. They have a legal seminar each year. We have gone to that. Um, there are all kinds of um, you know, different organizations that, that offer uh, seminars. Uh, I know we had a group go to Tappahannock. Uh, Ms. Schubert, you went to that one, didn't you? I did. Yes. So uh, we, we just want to encourage everyone uh, to stay as uh, fresh and up-to-date with all the information that's out there with what we do. Um. I mean, uh, I've been to the similar training already with the BPA, and I plan to go this year, but what would happen if we got someone, if we change it to must, what would happen, or maybe a legal thing, if someone, I mean, suppose someone got sick and couldn't attend, because it's only offered, I believe, once a year. I don't, I don't think it's legally binding. I think it's just, again, just sort of a trying to strengthen it a little bit. Okay. You want to try a motion now? Okay. Well, then I will make a motion. Um... To um, approve the modifications made to our general rules of order, Edmund. We need a second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Our next uh, order of business is to establish dates and times for regular planning commission meetings. We pretty much uh, do our um, plan revisions, and we have our work sessions typically on the first Thursday of the month if it's required, and then our regular planning commission meetings would be the third Thursday of the month. And, uh, see what your pleasure is on that, but I'm, I like Thursdays. I really don't see any reason to change those. It seems like we floated pretty good with them uh, this past year. And, you know, if we have inclement weather, it's in our rules what would happen. We would meet the following Thursday and that sort of thing. Okay. All righty. We want to get a, a motion to accept this? I so move. I have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay calendar is accepted and I am going to say that our organizational meeting is closed okay <clears throat> I'm not going to call our regular meeting uh, January 21st 2016 open at this time uh, our minutes are, are still being worked on so we'll approve those uh, at our next meeting that'll be our target to do those 
Uh, so uh, we are now in unfinished business, and we'll take up text 07-2015, staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, staff presented you this text amendment at your December meeting. Um, the text amendment, again, applies to the county as a whole. Purpose of the text amendment is twofold. One, to amend the existing sign regulations for planned unit development and also to add a new section for planned shopping centers and planned industrial parks. Both are types of planned unit development. Currently, the business sign regulations in a planned unit development requires a special exception. Um, so staff is suggesting that one of the changes with this text amendment is to remove that requirement for a special exception. If a property has already been rezoned to planned unit development of some kind, then to require a separate special exception is not really necessary for signage for a use that is allowed. Um, the second part of the text amendment is to add specific standards for signage within a planned shopping center or planned industrial park. Currently, we have standards in the ordinance for shopping centers and industrial parks within the business and industrial district. However, those would not apply to a planned shopping center or planned industrial park designation. Mr. Chairman, did you want me to read again the actual text amendment? Okay. Um, That's your general update. There didn't seem to be a lot of questions from the Planning Commission at the work session specifically directed to the text amendment, so staff did not propose any changes to that at this time. So it is as it was presented to you in December. Uh, commissioners, we've had a pretty good amount of time to look at this. We've also uh, had a very good work session on it, and uh, I'm open to any discussion um, that any of you might have at this time, and then I'll have my remarks. Anyone have any uh, comments they'd like to make at this time regarding or discussion regarding text 07-2015? Or any questions of staff? Not hearing any, uh, are we ready for a motion on text amendment 07-2015? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Uh-huh. We're going to be removing the special exception on this. No, this is separate from the... Special exception, is that correct? Yes, currently the ordinance under a planned unit in the signs section of the ordinance, there is a section for planned unit development. Under that section, it says business signs by special exception subject to some size requirements. It says... Specifically, Article 14, Section 6, Paragraph 2 is, by special exception, business signs provided that one freestanding free sign shall not exceed 15 feet in height and 100 square feet in size, and two wall signs shall not exceed 20 square feet in size. So what the text amendment is proposing is to remove... To have Article 14, Section 6, 2A be business signs, provided that freestanding signs shall not exceed 15, 15 feet in height 
and 100 square feet in size, and wall signs shall not exceed 20 square feet in size. And then 2B would be planned shopping center and planned industrial park signs provided that all of the size requirements that staff were present. In B, the provide, however, that no such sign, sign shall exceed 300 square feet in area. Referring to the, yes, the development identification sign. So the maximum height of 25 square feet and no more than two and a half square feet of sign area for each lineal foot of street frontage, provided that it does not exceed 300 square feet in area. What's your pleasure? Any other questions? Okay. Can I have a motion? Well, I was going to say I was going to um, have a comment. And my comment is uh, I feel like this text amendment uh, <coughs> is one that I can, I can support. So. But it's certainly up to whatever you guys feel we need to do. I haven't made a motion. I just, uh, that was part of the discussion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Whereas the public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practices warrants the approval of text amendment 07. 2015. I recommend that text amendment 07-2015 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of approval. Do I have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, our next order of business is SPX 06 staff report. Okay, you all have received any number of different um, memos and addendums and information from staff. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, sorry. The first, the first memo you received outlined exactly what is being requested and the differences in <coughs> what um, currently exists in the ordinance which is the 8 foot height and 32 square foot area requirement um, which is consistent with our highway corridor overlay district for business signs. Um, staff did want to point out that the Ladysmith community plan recommends that signage be no taller than six feet in height and no more than 50 square feet in area. Um, at the time of the adoption of the highway corridor sign regulations, there was considerable discussion about height and size of monument signs, which is what resulted in signs that were two feet taller, the eight feet versus the six feet recommended by the Ladysmith plan, but with less square feet, uh, less sign area, 32 square feet versus the 50 that the community plan suggested. And again, as we've previously noted, the Ladysmith, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Arby's, Arby's, CVS all meet the current highway corridor standards for their signage. Um, also received information that hopefully clarified some of the questions that came up during the work session. Um, I believe one of the questions was regarding how the signage was calculated, whether or not it was calculated based on both sides of the sign 
equaling the total signage for one sign and it's not. It's basically we're, we're looking at one side and that's the square footage for that sign. Um, so where the applicant is requesting um, 394 square feet of sign area for the two shopping center identification signs, it's that's the total for the two signs as opposed to counting all four sides. So that's not, they're not asking for 788 square feet of signage. Um, same principle applies to the other smaller monument signs. Again, staff did some suggested conditions in the original staff report for the Planning Commission to consider. The Planning Commission may choose to modify any of those conditions um, if they choose to recommend approval. Um, now that the you have recommended approval of the text amendment, you can recommend approval of this special exception. Again, you can modify the conditions suggested by staff. The final set of information that staff just sent out to you um, was again the modified sign renderings from the applicant, which showed some clarification on the square footage of signage that they are requesting as well as smaller signage on the two monument, the smaller monument signs. Also included some sign photos that the applicant sent to staff as well as a comparison of 32 square feet versus the 60 that the applicant is requesting. Also included some photos from local, from some surrounding um, shopping centers, including the Walmart in Ashland, which their sign is 13 feet tall, 12 feet wide, and 120 square feet. And then two other two multi-tenant signs that are less than eight feet tall and roughly 50-ish square feet in area. Um, those were just examples of signs that staff came across that may be more in keeping with the proposed text amendment. I'll go ahead and ask the applicant if they'd like to go ahead and make a presentation. So if you'd like to do it at this time. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, good evening. For the record, my name is Tom Klein. I'm an attorney with the firm Troutman Sanders, and I serve as counsel to Walmart. Um, I'm also accompanied by the overall development team that's working on the project as a whole, in addition to Walmart, representative uh, architect for Walmart, Joseph Saruya, and also John Wright with Bowler Engineering, who's the civil engineer for the overall project, and then representatives from Blackwood Development, Nolan Blackwood and Mark Greenberg, all of whom have appeared before you all before. Um, this project, I think as I indicated in the hearing that we had some months ago, on the rezoning component of it, it has really been the product of more than a year at this point of collaborative effort with the staff and this commission and this development team and all the other agencies that have been involved in reviewing it from the Virginia Department of Transportation, uh, Army Corps of Engineering, Planning, Engineering, et cetera, to try to put this total package of this development together. So we realize that we're dealing with something unique in the sense that we're coming in with a large planned development 
in the highway corridor overlay and trying to work to ensure that it's compatible with the regulations, compatible with the aesthetic uh, desires that you have for development in that corridor. And so I think the first premise we have to remember is the first part of this was a proffered zoning plan that was reviewed a few months ago. And the proffered zoning plan basically is a plan that proffers the overall layout of the entirety of the site and then also proffered uh, the elevations for the main retail store, predominantly being the Walmart retail store at this point. And so, and that of course got to you all after, you know, months of negotiations and working on transportation and layout and where the public road would come through the site, et cetera. And so the second part of it has also been working on some of these additional details. Um, one of the details, which is the second special exception was as we were in the midst of that process, then the county came back and indicated that there was going to be additional right of way that was going to be required along the frontage of the site. And that was the need for the second um, special exception to deal with the setbacks. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But the other part of it was that we were also aware that the county was in the process of working on a new signage ordinance. And so we were working to try to tailor the signage package that we had in a way that's compatible with the aesthetics and marketability of the overall development, but also to do it in a way, with some exceptions, that is fully consistent with the proposed ordinance that you all just reviewed, but obviously subject to some modifications. And I think that one of the benefits of the, this ordinance that you all just looked at, if it goes to the Board of Supervisors, is that it provides guidelines for these planned developments in terms of what the signage should look like, but it also provides language that gives the opportunity for an overall comprehensive signage package to be reviewed by the Board of Supervisors and also by, of course, the Planning Commission as we're doing tonight, because sometimes these ordinances, when you're dealing with a mar large multi-tenant development with a number of different out parcels, one ordinance isn't going to fit th that entirety. And so that's really what we've done. And so in the, in the process of that, you all have been very patient with us in terms of the questions and the opportunity to, pr to present it for the first hearing. And I think that we had a constructive work session a couple weeks ago, and, and we were asked some very good questions. Um, Commissioner had asked, first of all, we had mentioned that there were going to be some modifications to some of the versions that were going previously presented. And that was part of the process, the back and forth, to try to get feedback and to try to modify the plan to be more responsive and make sure it's uh, more compatible with the proposed ordinance. And so we have gone back and modified the plan from what you saw at the work session and submitted it back to the staff for review. And part of those modifications are um, that we've removed some of the signs that were previously shown, some of the monument-style signs that were previously shown on some of those out parcels, because as you all know from looking at the plan, there were double-stacked, if you will, out parcels fronting along Lady Smith Road. And so we were having a monument-style um, sign up on the frontage, and then we were also proposing some in the back. And some of the, some of the ones in the back have come off. Um, we've also taken one of the monument signs, and it was quite a bit wider, and it's not as wide as it had been before. And we also worked to get a little bit more clarity with respect to um, the actual square footage of each of the individual signs. And so I, could, I think probably the easiest way is to go through them one at a time and kind of explain to you what our thought process. Another good, com and, I, and I think that, that was this commissioner's comment about, you know, making sure that we get back, get a clear plan back in front of you all with the square footage. And so that's the revised plan that you have in front. The second comment that we had um, at the work session, the meeting was, can you go out and take a look at what else is out in this general area, here in the county and elsewhere, to make sure that, we're, that we can show you the other types of signs um, that are out there. And our architect, Joseph Ceruya, has done that. Some of those are presented, it's not shown on the page, it's up there, but were presented back to the staff as illustrative of, of some of the older signs and older, older shopping center signs that are out there. Um, and then he has other photos that he can show you as well if there are additional questions. Um, but I think kind of the starting point is, you know, the, the one at the very top, of course, is the shopping center identification sign. And that's this sign up here. And that was the subject of some of the discussion. And we we're proposing that in this area and then that one back and one back in that second location, right in there, and then the one up there. And 
talking about the proposed ordinance that was just recommended, that ordinance, first of all, allows two large center identification um, signs for an overall development such as this, for one large plan development. Um, the thought process was obviously it makes sense to have one up on Ladysmith Road because that is where you're going to have, you know, obviously the traffic, the visibility, the main access point. But the other thought was to have the second one back here because this will also be, when this ever gets built out down below, that will also be an entrance and an access point into the site for people that may be coming into the site from the other direction. And so the, the, the size of the site, this sign, I guess I would start with the proposed ordinance that's being recommended has a height limitation of 25 feet. And so that was kind of our starting point. We tried to model this sign within the constraints of that overall height, which was 25, which is 25 feet for that kind of center identification. Remember, there's only two of these types of signs that are allowed that would be under that ordinance. The second component of it was the actual square footage. And for that type of signage, and I have the staff correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 300 square feet that would be permitted for a sign such as this. Our calculation is shown down here in that corner. Um, and what we're showing is for each face, in other words, this is going to be a two-sided sign because it's going to capture people coming and going down the road. For each face, I think Joseph, the, the architect, had calculated that it's, there's only 189 square feet. So we don't have one face on this that's in excess of 300 square feet. It's 189 per each face. And that 80, 189, what we're calculating and looking at that is the Walmart sign up here, the signage for fuel prices, and then also reserving some panels for some of the tenants back within the center. And those, each of those, and so he's broken that down on his calculation showing that the Walmart sign itself would be 64 square feet. And then the fuel signs together would be 32 square feet. And then they were reserving six spaces for individual tenants that would want to be highlighted, and this would be part of the future build out of the development. And each one of those would be a little more than 15 square feet. And so if you add all that up, you don't have any sign face on one side that's in excess of 300 feet, which was the limit under the ordinance. Um, now, of course, again, to, just to be clear, there's going to be two sides to this. So the, the back side of it would be we'd propose the same on the back side. So you'd have basically that total, you know, the, the 189 square feet times two on both sides. So, so that's this large sign. And I, I guess, and, and also with respect to the architecture, because, the, you know, this ordinance doesn't speak to the architectural detail of the signs per se, but because the ordinance also allows us to submit a, an overall package that you all have to plan, uh, have to approve, then we would also be subject to this architectural detail. And what we've done here is tried to match the architectural quality of this sign with the architectural detail and the materials that we're using on the building so that you don't have a situation where we're saying, okay, we want it to be 25 feet high and we want our um, 189 square feet on each side, but it's going to be a big pylon sign or something that you might view as unattractive. We've tried to design this so it would be a very attractive center identification sign uh, compatible with the, the colors and the materials of the overall center. So that's really that sign. Um, the other components of signs that are permitted under the proposal is to allow for signage for each of the individual out parcels. And so in the proposal, we have this classification of signs, which are the proposed monument signs that are identified there as sign B. And we're proposing six of those. And they're, I, they're the ones that are identified on the exhibits as the Bs, um, basically three of them along Ladysmith Road, another one back here in this corner, and then um, one over here for this out parcel, and one for this out parcel here in the back. So a good number of these signs, you know, you've got the three that will be up on Lady Smith Road. A good number of these signs are fairly internal to the site. This sign back in here, and then the signs that are back in here. Now, of course, this will be a public road, you know, be dedicated as a public road, but these will be internal to the overall development, except for the ones up on Lady Smith Road. And the new ordinance 
um, recommends a height for these type of signs it being eight feet high. And so you'll notice that we have made sure that the, we're proposing those signs to be eight, foot high, eight feet high. Um, the ordinance does recommend 32 square feet um, for, the faith, for the signage face. And the only um, exemption from that that we were suggesting as part of this comprehensive package would be that the sign face, we would reserve the right for each of the faces to be 60 square feet. Um, if you look at the, the Walmart sign at the very top of that one, just the Walmart part, portion of that panel, that was about 64 square feet. And so what we were thinking is if you have other tenants, obviously they wouldn't be on signs nearly as high or nearly as big or nearly as wide. These would be eight feet high. But we wanted to give, you know, for purposes, or at least when I say we, I'm talking the developer that's going to be trying to attract um, quality retailers and other users for the total build out of this development, um, you know, to, to provide the flexibility that they're going to need to attract the kind of national retailers that we're looking for. And of course, one of the key questions that the na uh, national retailers are going to ask are, you know, what kind of signage and what am I going to have? And so what we're asking for is for the individual out parcels that they have the sign, that it would be consistent with the height requirements of the proposed ordinance but that we're just asking for a little bit of relief for each face, that it would be more consistent with some of the requests that I think the developer frequently gets as they're working with retailers, uh, which would be a little bit more, would be a bit more than the 32 square feet. So that's, that is this sign. And that sign, as I mentioned, there are six of those. And again, in response to some of the feedback that we had um, at the last hearing, we've taken some of, there were a few that were located along there and those have come off. So we've reduced the number of those. Um, that sign's not as wide as it previously had been in some of the earlier versions you may have seen. And then, again, we're keeping the height consistent with your ordinance, um, but we are asking for a little bit of relief as part of the comprehensive package in terms of the square footage for each face. And those, most of them would probably be double-faced um, because, for example, if you're a user or retailer up here, typically with those kind of signs, they would put them perpendicular to the roads, again, so people could see them from both uh, directions. Um, this sign, this is really the only one of these signs, this, this sign that they're calling Monument Sign C. And this is a sign, this is unrelated, again, to the Walmart, but he was proposing it for this parcel up here. And the thought was, from the developer's perspective, and he can clarify further if there are questions, was that this parcel as part of the plan development may be a parcel that lends itself also to a series of multiple a series of multi uses within that one parcel it has it's a nice parcel it's a nice size you know if you think of the other up here we've got these are smaller parcels and then this is going to be the Walmart fuel facility and then this is all the Walmart Walmart piece back here but a piece like this it's a nice size and it would lend itself you know it has an access point down here may lend itself to a series you know a, a mini um, uh, shop, mini shopping center, if you will. And so there's a possibility that we may need some relief in terms of the, the tenant and then also some additional panels. And so I think with that one, that's why they were requesting that that possibly be 12 feet high and then also um, a little bit more square footage than the 32 that's allowed. But that only applies to that one sign. They're only requesting one of those signs, and it's only for this parcel right here. Um, that would be zoned as part of the planned shopping center. So um, I hope that's... Can I just interrupt for a second? Yes, sir. Because if you'll notice, your Monument A sign that you want is when you look at where it is there. Yes, sir. It's right there, and th these two signs are fairly close to each other. Yes, and I think that he's, what they've been looking at, and that's an excellent question, Mr. Chairman, I think he's been looking at the possibility of perhaps some flexibility in terms of where exactly it would be located. You know, when they come in for their site plan review and for the final development of this parcel, you know, maybe evaluating exactly where it would be there so that you don't have a, you know, obviously, so they're not blocking one another in a way. But I think, you know, right now there isn't a specific site plan. I mean, right now there is a specific plan for the layout of the Walmart. There's a plan for the layout of the overall center, but there aren't specific um, users that have come in for these others. So each of the individual signs and the sign permits would be designed, you know, as part of that process. So right now they're kind of looking for the conceptual approval so they can go out and market, you know, these parcels and say, okay, if you're a national retailer, 
you come in for this parcel, here's what your zoning is, and here's what your signage would be allowed, knowing, of course, they'll have to come in for, as part of the site plan review, to design the individual site and the, and the placement of it. Um, I mean, the one, we, we certainly know, you know, this one, we are, we, you know, this will be Walmart property as well, and so we definitely want to have that one located in that area. And well, that's where your fuel is going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that would be a Walmart parcel that would have also the center identification sign on it. And part of that is um, to address also, I know the vice chairman had asked us before, do we know for certain that we're even going to want to have any of these signs in the public right of way? And that's part of the special, special, the second special exception. And I think our objective is to keep them all, even once you have the dedication and even after we have, you know, the right of way improvements to keep them all on the property. The sense was just to have that flexibility in case one of them needed to overlap a little bit out into the public right away as we're getting into final design and engineering of the site. But, but the intent for that one is to keep it on the Walmart parcel. Um, and, and Mr. Saruya, he has, and it's, it's entirely up to the commission if you'd like to see some of the other ones that he looked at before, but I think really our starting point was kind of in working with the county, starting with, okay, what kind of zoning did they want to see this property? You know, you have B1 zoning that allows higher signs than this, et cetera. You know, the thought from the county was, let's get it into the plan development. So, you know, we've kind of taken it into the planned shopping center development. So you have a planned comprehensive. And then we also understood, you know, there's also going to be some efforts to address the overall signage because, as I think they just discussed, the old signage ordinance as it applies to planned development really doesn't encompass what you would have for attracting you know, a lot of national retailers for a site like this. So I think this, the new ordinance that you all acted on is responsive to what we're kind of seeing in terms of being able to attract users for these types of developments. But there's a few of these signs where we felt like consistent with the intent and the spirit of your ordinance, we just wanted to see, seek a little bit of relief in terms of some of the square footage. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Commission members, do you want to have any questions? So basically, you're not going to have anything in the right of way. That is not the plan. The plan is to try to keep it out of the right of way, but to, but to ask for that approval in the event. You know, there may be a situation where we're engineer. I mean, first of all, if anything was in the right of way, it would have to be relocated in the event that VDOT ever said it's got to get out of there. And we understand that, and, and VDOT has stated that, and that'll be part of our right of way permit. But secondly. Right now, our plan is to try to design these so that the signs stay within on our property on, and out of the right of way. But we just wanted to have that approval so as we're going through the engineering process, if for some reason from an engineering perspective, let's say in final engineering, VDOT, you know, the alignment changes a little bit one way or another so that we have the capacity to, you know, if we have to encroach a little bit, that we have that authority. But yes, to more specifically respond to your question, and I'll have the engineer and the developer, I think the intent is to try to design, do our best to design this so that signs stay within the public right of way. I mean, in, in the private property, rather. And we'll talk more about that with the special exception and stuff. And we'll really get more of that. Anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to. Um, I had a question of staff. I'm, I mean, I'm real familiar with the land and the road, but there's not any uh, <coughs> hardships with the land there. I mean, the land's pretty flat, correct? That would block these signs from being able to attract. Thank you very much for your okay. presentation. Your I time. thank the commission. And what I would say is, um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and just talk a little bit. If that's okay. Sure, uh, go ahead. And uh, just a little discussion and. Basically, um, I think uh, the text amendment we passed uh, is, is uh, going to meet what we need. Um, when I look at Monument Sign A, they're requesting 381.5 square feet, and there'll be two of those signs. Um, I would like to make a condition that they be 320 square feet. Uh, I feel that uh, that is still a pretty large sign when you compare it to many of the other uh, jurisdictions around, and uh, I think that is reasonable. So that's one of my conditions. The other is that the uh, monument sign B, 
they would like it to be 60 square feet, but I think we need to stick with 32. 32 is what is in our, uh, the text amendment we just passed, and I, I would like to, to sort of hold it there. When I looked again uh, in surrounding jurisdictions, uh, did some measurements myself, I, I feel like that is, 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 will also work. And then monument uh, sign C, uh, they're asking for 181.7 uh, square feet in uh, I feel like we need to stick with 60 square feet. I, I think that that is, uh, a, I saw a lot of multi-tenant with four tenant signs and they were 50 feet in some of the uh, jurisdictions that I've visited. And um, they are, there are a lot of signs proposed. The, the B, there are going to be six of those. Uh, there's only going to be the one uh, Monument C, which will be toward the front of the road, but it'll also be near uh, the sign A for the fuel and that sort of thing, the identification of the shopping center. And uh, that's just my recommendation. Um, and I certainly let you all have any discussion with that that you would like, but uh, I am going to make a motion based on that, but certainly will entertain any thoughts that, that you, you have about that. That's kind of where I'm coming from. Mr. Chairman, may I just clarify one thing? Sure. Your, um, comment regarding monument sign A being 320 square feet, you are referring to each side of each sign being 160 square feet, correct? That is correct. Okay, so yes. I just wanted to make sure that correct. that was... Rather than being 189, it would be 160. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> I want to go to 640. So um, we're proposing that sign B remain within the ordinance. And so for A, we're going over by 20 square feet total. And we're going over a little on C too, right? Correct. I have to look at it. I think it's about. Any other discussion? I'm going to go ahead and make a motion then. Uh, I'm going to approve with modifications where a special exception request SPX 0615 for Blackwood Capital LLC appears to be generally consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan and future land use map and whereas a public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practices warrants approval of this request. I recommend that SPX 0615 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of approval with the following changes that I mentioned earlier that the uh, monument sign A uh, would be 160 uh, rather than 189 square feet for a total of 320. That uh, monument sign B, uh, B, there would be six of those signs, but uh, the square footage would be 32 feet. And the uh, monument sign, uh, sign C, there's only one of those, but rather than 181.7, I would request that that be at 60. And then also the staff modifications. Mr. Chairman, one before, I don't know for sure whether it's appropriate to move on your modification without first uh, establishing that request. Oh, okay. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable with that. Okay. I withdraw that motion. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't want to be rude and cut you off. No, you, you were great. No, no, no. That's that's no problem. Uh, so I guess I would, uh, whereas special exception request SPX 0615 for Blackwood Capital LLC appears to be generally inconsistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan of future land use map, and whereas the public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practice Warrants denial of this request, I recommend that SPX 0615 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors 
uh, with a recommendation of uh, denial. Okay. May, may I speak to that? Um, I think procedurally. Sure, I'll let you speak to it. Yeah. Why not? I do think procedurally I'm not aware that there's any issue with you all recommending approval subject to modifying our conditions. That's, um, that's what I And I, I think, and you know, okay. so that they get, right, I mean, obviously that's your prerogative, and I think that, I guess, I, I think procedurally I don't see any error in that being recommended to them with approval, just with a recommendation that you modify the conditions. I've done that in many right. hearings in, in many jurisdictions across Virginia. I realize that's different than what was applied for, but that'll be reflected in your recommendation up to the Board of Supervisors. Well, I, I think what, what I'm looking at, I've made a modification saying no, and depending on what the Commission decides to do, then I would make a recommendation to uh, approve with the modifications that I had. Okay. So that, I will do two separate motions, okay. and I think we'll go with, since that's what you recommend. And it seems like it's the same effect either way, right? That's fine, as long as there's a recommendation for approval, Subject yes. to your modification. The modifications well, that's going up are to the, board. to the conditions. They're yes. not to the request. It's to right. the conditions. To the right. conditions, yes. I just wanted to be clear. So. You still want to keep me in the chair? No. Uh, do I have, have a second to the motion to deny? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That motion carries. And then, I would like to approve SPX 0615 with modifications, where a special exception request with the modifications uh, for Blackwood Capital LLC appears to be generally consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan and future land use map, and whereas the public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practices warrants the approval of this request, I recommend that SPX 0615 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of approval with the changes that I mentioned uh, and also the uh, staff recommendations. Okay. With, the, with the changes, changes, modifications to the conditions. Conditions. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. I'm sorry, just a little levity. Signed, signed, everywhere it's signed. <laughs> Do this, don't do that. Can you see the sign? We'll now look at SPX 07 2015 and staff report. The SP, the special exception 07 is a special exception request in accordance with the highway corridor overlay district regulations. The first part of the request is to allow landscaping and signage within the area of the ultimate right-of-way. Um, the area of the ultimate right-of-way is slightly different than the actual right-of-way. The two can be dedicated at different times. So right now there's, let's say, 100 feet of right-of-way along Lady Smith Road. The ultimate right-of-way is 150 feet. So by the highway corridor regulations, you wouldn't be able to have landscaping or signage within that 50 feet, even though it's not currently dedicated. So this request is to allow the use of that area that's not yet dedicated, but eventually will be required. That is the first part of that request. The second part of the request goes back to the the size of the signage. Again, the highway corridor overlay district allows for a single monument sign, eight feet tall, 32 square feet. So everything that you just previously recommended approval for, you will also, with this text amendment, would need to make the same modifications to allow for signage that is in excess of what is currently allowed. There you said DDOT has commented they will not permit tenant signage within their right of way. 
they talking about the whole six lanes or the they are referring to actual dedicated right of way and they're referring to the the out parcel sign so any right of way that is that is dedicated the applicant VDOT would not allow a sign within that area now again if the right of way has not yet been dedicated then the sign could go in that area because it is not VDOT's right of way at that time. At such time that that right of way is dedicated, the sign would have to be moved by the developer or parcel owner. But yes, VDOT has said they will not permit signage within their right of way. Do we want to allow the app or the applicant to make a presentation I'm okay if he would like to come up and okay. have any questions and I know you've explained this one time before but just again yes sir. why do you feel you need this flexibility right so um, and I think um, Commissioner Horton kind of put her finger on the question and I think it was addressed adequately properly by staff we have significant frontage along Lady Smith Road as everyone knows and VDOT has plans to ultimately, there, there are certain road improvements that we are going to install as part of our development to open the store and to open the development. But there's, there are also improvements that are contemplated as part of a long range plan. And so VDOT, in contemplating all that, had come back and said, well, we want to have an ultimate right of way of a certain number of feet off the center line of Lady Smith Road. We don't know if we're going to need it all right away now, but we'd like to know that it's there. And so you kind of have this concept in real estate that you have land that's dedicated, and that means you basically give it to them and it's now theirs, or land that you reserve and basically say, okay, here it is. We still own it, but we recognize that when and if the time comes that you need that land, it's yours. And that's the reservation component. And I think that's kind of what makes this a little bit unusual. So in other words, there's a lot of land that will be across that frontage that may be in that latter category, what we would call ultimate right of way or property that's reserved that they may want at some point. And so what we are saying is we might want the, and but for the county's code uh, interpretation, they view that ultimate right of way as being where they have the setback line, even though we still own it. It's still technically our, the developer's property. And so that's all we're saying is, look, there is property that may be platted as ultimate right of way that may be dedicated at some point, but we still own it. But in that area, we'd like to reserve the ability to have to possibly have the signs, and we don't think, frankly, that we will need to, with the understanding, obviously, that when that is ever dedicated to VDOT, to the extent there's any sign that's located in there, it's going to have to get moved out of there. And VDOT would require that anyhow. So that's that's the only flexibility really we were asking for with this and then also the landscaping component of it as well same idea other than the fact that we think that the landscaping will probably be there permanently because VDOT does allow landscaping in even the lands that ultimately if it gets built out and dedicated they frequently allow landscaping there and they I think they've recognized and affirmed when they were here a couple of weeks ago that even if it's dedicated and the whole thing's built out there's still going to be a gap between the right of way to end the edge of our property and let me ask the team to make sure I didn't misspeak or state anything but but that's really what it comes down to is property that we're still going to have but is showing up on a plat as an ultimate right of way the flexibility to put things in there the signs in there with the understanding that we if VDOT ever says nope we want it it's got they've got to come out come and, and we're just talking about the ones up there on, on along the front and also all of this would you know this flexibility that w you would give as part of this special exception Still, there's a total understanding that every one of those out parcels is going to have to go through a site plan review process. And it's going to be reviewed by the staff, and it's going to be reviewed by VDOT and everyone else before the final locations get installed or any utilities or anything get installed in those areas. Question for staff, and I know VDOT's not here, and they were here, and we, we asked questions, but the um, HB2 funding, are they doing four lanes and ultimately one day six lanes? I'm just trying to understand that because my understanding was it was going to be four lanes to start with and then eventually maybe one day six. I believe the HB2 funding, the project that was proposed is the four lanes. 
and yet the ultimate design for Lady Smith Road is six. At this time, it's my understanding we're aiming for four. And I think that's part of the ultimate yes. confusion or whatever you want to call That's it with right. this is we're starting with four lanes and it's eventually going to go to six. That's right. And, and you're so just asking for flexibility with the four if it's needed. Because yeah, Exactly, because what they're asking, what VDOT and what the county is asking us now is to make sure that we set aside the land that's so the county okay. knows it's there for when and if it ever goes to six lanes. And so we're since we're saying, you know, that that you know, we hope that'll happen, but it may not happen. In the meantime, if that land never gets dedicated to VDOT, but is still shown as being in a um, reservation area or an ultimate right of way, just that flexibility. And we're frankly talking about a couple feet of encroachment. You know, we we still need to keep the signs close to the, where the uses are going to be, which is on our property. So it's not like we're sticking these things out. So that that's all this is really about is just that flexibility. Uh, question: Is is it is the hinging on the six? Lane, not the four lane. I think the ultimate right of way dedication is for six, right? Yeah, but I mean yes. the sign. Yes. I'm trying to see where the sign, where your suggestion would be located. So I'm going to ask our engineer because he he actually prepared. And it's a good question. He prepared an exhibit showing where, with the ultimate right of way dedication, where that would line would be. Yeah, you all should have this exhibit in, in your uh, document package. And what we did here is. You see this dark black line. This is the ultimate 75 foot right of way line that we're just speaking of. And then to see this red line up through here? This is the ultimate edge of work from VDOT. We coordinated this with VDOT, and these are the files they gave us. So you can see there is sufficient room to build the landscaping and signage between this red road line and our property line. Does that, does that? Is that so clear it would to you? be where the blue shaded. Yeah, the blue shade. That would be the landscape buffer we're showing here. And then when we get to this parcel, a portion of it is going to be in the V dot right away, with the remainder being located on the actual parcel. Yeah, that and that's that. So that's the all, solid line, line. The solid line is the ultimate right away. I just right, want to clear, clarify that again. And that red line is the ultimate six lane configuration where that outermost edge of work would be. That red line. And that was based on files we, we coordinated with VDOT uh, several weeks ago. So what, what the red line is showing is that even if they ultimately build the whole six lanes out, from the edge of their construction, there is still going to be a significant gap of land before you get to our new property line. Remember, our new property line is being established because we're, giving, we're dedicating that property for that road improvement as part of this project. So that's... That's what it's kind of, the, it's in that shaded area is predominantly what we're talking about. And so to the extent there would be a sign that would encroach into those areas, that's all they're talking about is the flexibility to allow it to encroach. And again, knowing that if VDOT ever says it's got to go, it would have to go. Kind of like when you have to move back your mailbox. Yes. Yeah. Only this is going to be a lot bigger. Yeah, that's right. And a lot more expensive to move. Which, which is why as a practical matter as those parcels build out, the, you know, Users may say, let's just keep our, keep our signs on our property and not ever have to think about that, even though it may be many years off. So, now With this six lane, how far back would you be coming to that blue? Well, the, the, edge of the, six, the edge of the six lane is right there, that red line. And then you see we're a couple feet off with our blue. And our, lands, our landscape plan will be within that blue area. And they'll have to meet the VDOT requirements for plans within the county. And when uh, Mr. Beal was here from VDOT, he said landscaping is a, a familiar encroachment to the right of Does anyone else have questions of uh, applicant or staff? Feel free to, to ask them there. Any further discussion? There were any more comment from VDOT just within our parentage of rights? I'll be happy to entertain a motion at this time.
I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Approve with modifications. Whereas special exception request SPEX 0715 Blackwood Capital LLC appears to be generally consistent with goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan to confer the land use map. And whereas the public assessment convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practices warrants the approval of this request, I recommend that SPEX 0715 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors for the recommendation and approval with the following changes. And basically, that would be the, what we brought up before, the signage changes. And I'd like to see the setback rule enforced. There were also um, a couple of conditions that staff had suggested in the original staff report, if you wanted to also include those in your motion. Please. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next, we have uh, public hearing. Would you like to go with the public hearing protocol? Mr. Stanley, may I just oh. ask one question? When Mr. Fumara made the motion, he referenced something about the setback, and I'm sorry, those of us out here couldn't hear what that. Oh, to basically go with the complete setback that we said it was a six-lane highway. Okay. Okay. So in other words, it was a recommendation for approval of the special exception request subject to the conditions on the signage that were discussed yes. in the previous motion. Okay. Thank you. Just, just so we're clear, because she was referencing conditions in a staff report, but I didn't. There were two of them. Um, there were two of the three. Uh, let me find my staff report. Two. Um, a two wit and that signs not be located within the area of Caroline County Utility East. Mr. Fumara, just to again clarify your motion in reference to the setback, there wasn't there wasn't any request within the special exception dealing with the setbacks. Referring to the setback of the building or the sign or the landscaping? The signage thing being set back. Okay, so the you are your motion is for the signs to be outside of the ultimate right of way, but landscaping may be within the ultimate right of way, and then the signage still meeting the previous special exception. Modification. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Public hearing. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. The purpose of a public hearing is for the Caroline County Planning Commission to listen carefully to the verbal expression and position and opinion from the citizens of Caroline County. Public hearings are not question and answer sessions or debates, and all statements should be addressed to the chair. 
when members of the public offer comment, they need to clearly state their name and address prior to making their comments. Persons speaking at public hearings are respectfully requested to keep comments brief, not to exceed three minutes, and to address only those issues pertinent to the matters advertised for public hearing. And that is all that applies to this text amendment public hearing. Okay. Staff report? Anything? I am going to address text amendments 01 and 02, um, 2016, in the same uh, staff report, only because they are two kind of of the same thing, but slightly different. You received staff reports for two text amendments. Both text amendments propose to add a carryout restaurant as a use in the M1 industrial district. Carryout restaurant would be a restaurant where food is prepared on site, purchased, and then consumed off premises. The first text amendment proposes the use as a buy right use with the other proposing the use to require a special exception permit. The Board of Supervisors requested that staff and the Planning Commission evaluate adding carryout restaurant as a use in the industrial district based on a request from a citizen who would like to have such a use on a property zoned M1. Currently, a restaurant use is not permitted within the industrial district, carryout or otherwise. The main difference between the two proposed text amendments, of which the Planning Commission should only recommend one, is the potential for further evaluation of an application, the suitability of the site, the, an area for such a use, the potential for conditions, and the public hearing process um, involved when a use requires a special exception. Staff is aware in other localities where restaurant uses exist within industrial districts, um, industrial parks and industrial areas, it is just not currently a use in our industrial district. So you will need to hold public hearing for each one. Um, text Amendment 01 is adding the, adding carry out restaurant as a use by right. And then Text Amendment 02 would be to add the, a carry out restaurant as a use with a special exception permit. I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak to Text Amendment 01-2016, Carry Out Restaurant by Right? Again, if you just give us your name and address. Uh, my name is Wesley Deloach, uh, 27485 Sunshine Road, Ruta Glen, Virginia. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak here tonight. We're requesting that building currently zoned M1 also be allowed to serve as a takeout restaurant. This will allow us to serve fresh steamed crabs, uh, spiced shrimp, and oysters. The response in the, in the community has been very good uh, with over 200 responses. People in the area say now if, we, if we're allowed to open this up, they don't have to go to Colonial Beach to get their spice room. We also have the opportunity to bring revenue back to Caroline that we didn't have before. This will also generate revenue for other local businesses. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to uh, this text amendment? Anyone else like to speak? I declare the public hearing closed. Any discussions, any questions of staff? I have some questions for staff. Um, could you remind us again, just in general, what's already allowed uh, in the industrial zoning M1 uh, by rights and, and what's allowed by special ex exception? Just yeah. In general. In general, my apologies, we apparently forgot our zoning ordinance. Um, <clears throat> in general, you're looking at manufacturing type uses, um, sawmills, 
That's by right. Right. Um, testing, research, blacksmith. Oh. So industry. Right. Your heavier industrial um, uses. By special exception, you have things like tow service operation, um, auto repair, rebuilding. I feel for some reason like there's an airport in there. And you mentioned something about nearby localities mm -hmm. doing it by right. I do not. I, I do not know if it is by right or by special exception. Okay. Um, but we are aware of various industrial parks that have restaurant uses. So it is not an unheard of use to be associated with an industrial park. Um, but off the top of my head, I do not know if they are by right or by special exception. Well, it sounds like right now it, heavy industry is by rights, but the smaller is by special <coughs> exception. Like you said, towing businesses, mm -hmm. auto repair. So I'm just trying to figure out what category this would fit in more, like restaurant carry out. all the questions I think I have for now. I'll go ahead and hold a public hearing on uh, Text Amendment 02-2016 and then we'll review those for, for a vote. Uh, Text Amendment 02-2016 uh, allows uh, a carry-out restaurant uh, by special exception. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this uh, Text Amendment? I declare that it is open. If anyone would like to speak to this, and that is for a carry out restaurant uh, that has to be approved by special exception. Is there anyone who would like to speak? I declare the public hearing closed. Okay. Um, I'm open to discussion on these two. Um, I don't know if you would call this down zoning. Industrial is a fairly heavy zone, is that correct? Correct. And in Caroline, we only have one business district, and we only have one industrial district. So we don't have a difference between light industrial uses and heavy industrial uses. We just have industrial uses. So all of those uses fit into the same category. special exemption, I mean, if it's already allowing, <coughs> sounds like personal businesses like towing or, what else do you say, automotive repair, and I mean, that's not, that's not too much down, I don't know if it's back to that, by special exempt, exception, I don't know if it would be down zoning, since we, we don't have, you said we don't have heavy industry versus light. I guess the way I view this is I do not think um, by right would be the way that I would look. I would not want that. I think that that might be, a, and I use the term, too loose. I would prefer that if something within the industrial is allowed like this, at least be by special exception so that you can look at it and see if it really is something that, okay, yes, this was a, for the public good, uh, welfare, and uh, an exception could be made. Uh, I could see that. But I, I don't think by right, I, I could not see that being done. Because by rights right now is <coughs> basically heavy industry. It just doesn't fit in that category. By special exception, I could see. I 
I will say that in other jurisdictions, um, craft beer establishments, because of the chemicals and things that are involved with that, uh, many of them are located in, in industrial areas for that reason. Um, so, not, I'm not saying that that you know this yeah, is craft beer. He's, yeah, he's, it's Pennsylvania. Well, are we ready to have a motion, or someone? You, Bob, you got a question? No, no. All righty, go ahead. For, for a point of correction here, is this for both O one and O two? Well, we're what we would do is we would say doing? text amendment O one twenty sixteen. We'd make a motion. Thank you. Uh, clarifying, we would vote that yes or no. And then we would vote text amendment 02, yes or no. Okay. But you cannot vote both of them yes. Yeah, I heard that earlier. Yeah. You cannot vote both of them yes. You cannot right. approve both of them. The yeah. one I'm special exception. Right. It, you it can, either by right or special Right. Exception. You can deny both of them or you can approve one of them, but you cannot approve both of them. And we have to take it separately. Yes, you have to take it separately. So if you first you are making a motion on carry out restaurant as a by right use. Text Amendment 01 2016. I'll make a motion on Text Amendment 01 2016. Whereas the public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practice warrants the denial of Text Amendment 01 2016, I recommend the Text Amendment 01 2016 be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of denial. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. And then we need a separate motion on text amendment 02 2016. Okay, whereas the public necessity, convenience, general welfare, and good zoning practices warrant the approval of text amendment 02 2016, I recommend that the this text amendment be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of approval. And that's 02 2016. Do I have a second? Yeah. 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 Well, you denied this one. I heard you by right that there's a special exception to make a motion okay. to be approved. I, I didn't hear the old one. I heard the old two. You need a second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. All righty. Let's see. We are down to any and all, I believe. Well, they don't have anything. I just want to say <laughs> thank you all very much. And uh, I want to say that the uh, Walmart signage, was not an easy um, really. undertaking, but uh, I really think in matching what we have here locally, uh, I think what we eventually approved was right in line, and I, I want to thank the members of the commission for that. Thank you, and uh, I thank you for your confidence in uh, myself uh, and Bob, and uh, we'll both work real hard, and uh, thank you again. I look forward to a really good year. And... With that, I'm going to adjourn to our regular February meeting. We do not need a work session. February 18th. Oh, and uh, Mr. Schubert, thank you for bringing this uh, backing the crossing and the widening of uh, Lady Smith. Thank you. That's excellent.